Hi, my name is Holger Kustrom with The Geek Group, and today we're going to autopsy an iPhone 7 iPhone 7 was released this morning, and uh, those of us in the tech world just can't wait to tear them apart as soon as they are. So here we go. Uh, one thing I will say is if you're taking a phone apart in the hopes of getting it to work when you put it back together, make sure you keep your screws in order. We're going to start with the two pentalobe screws on the bottom. I'm actually going to move that over here. The iPhone 7, much like the 6S, used an adhesive all the way around the edge to uh, facilitate the water resistance. Once that's removed, you will have to replace it and you probably won't get the same watertight seal that you had when the phone was new. The difference also between the iPhone 6S and the 7 is that the cables run along the side here instead of the top. So we'll make sure that when we take that off, we'll keep that in mind. Get an entry point here and carefully pry. Now I have had this one apart, so if you're taking, if you're doing a repair on your iPhone 7, it will battle you quite a bit more than, than this one is battling me. And carefully working around the adhesive. You don't want to force this up, you will crack your screen. There is going to be a limit to how far we can autopsy this phone. They, Apple has used a new screw that nobody has a tool for yet, except Apple of course, and that is a trilobe screw. And as we carefully peel the screen back here, you can see a number of things that are the same and a few that are different. Uh, battery here is a little bit larger, runs up underneath this plate. On previous models they had two separate plates, uh, one for the dock connector, one for the um, um, LCD connector and the digitizer and the home button. We see the, the digitizer, the home button and the LCD are now running through one cable across here under that same shield which is held together by four trilobe screws so we will not be able to remove those sadly. Um, the cable on the top here runs through along another shield on the bottom. That is where your front-facing camera assembly, which houses your connections for your ear speaker, your proximity sensor, which senses when you put the phone next to your ear, turns the, uh, turns the display off, as well as um, the ambient light sensor. Um, and your front-facing camera is also under here. So we look a little bit under here as well. Same type of connections for your power button and your volume buttons underneath here. Um, also held together by it looks like pentalobe screws. And coming down here we have the loudspeaker, the, uh, the lightning connector, and then connections for the Taptic engine. Um, you will, no, no headphone jack on this. Um, they do have a connection for the Taptic engine here. They say there's a second speaker here but I'm actually not seeing it. I see the microphone down here and a connection for the Taptic engine, but that's it. So I see the one speaker connection down here for your loudspeaker and the ear speaker up in the top corner on the screen here. So let's uh, proceed. Let's see how much of this we can take apart. I see a small screw in there along the top, so we'll remove that, and those do look like standard double zero Phillips. Flip this back over carefully. Remove the two that hold that shield in place. Once again, keeping all my screws very well organized. And we're going to carefully, with a nylon spudger, pull that cable up and out. And that is, as I said before, the cable assembly that holds the, um, that transfers data from the front facing camera, the ear speaker connections, proximity sensor, and ambient light sensor. And then we have another connector here, which is our front facing camera. I'm going to move that out of the way just a little bit and we'll pull that out of there as well. Looks 
like an alloy screw that doesn't want to be attracted to my screwdriver. So we'll just leave that in there and be careful when I remove the shield. And from there, it looks like we can so again, carefully lift out our front-facing camera. Larger than on the previous iPhone models. Connection is a little bit different as well. This has the um, image stabilization. Camera floats within the housing there. Move that off to the side. Um, it looks like on this side we're going to be limited to what we can remove, uh, but these are standard pop connections as we see here. Uh, these connections um, are going to be for, as I said before, the volume and the power cables. Um, and then you have your GPS and your Wi-Fi antenna that runs along this bar across the top here. The service, if we're going to move to the bottom here, which we're going to need to do now because we can't do anything else on the top, service antenna runs down the side into the dock port. And uh, we see this little cable here, so that's not changed. Big Taptic engine. Uh, this is your vibrate motor, as many are used to calling it. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull that out. There's some of that adhesive that's gone awry. Looks like three screws hold the Taptic engine in. As well as something that's very different. We have not seen before. The Taptic engine actually making its contact with a cable. And I see that running right down across here under there. We'll verify that. Yep, there is a cable. So we'll remove these two little screws right here. Looks like the shroud that's holding the cable, the cover. And then the pop connector that holds. And I see a lot of seals around these connectors, so that's got to be part of the plan for the water resistance. Um, important note, if you're thinking that this iPhone is waterproof, it will not be. Apple themselves say that there is a degradation of the seal over time. Um, they say they're calling water resistance, not waterproof. So aside from that, that looks almost as far as we can take that apart without having those tools on hand yet, the uh, trilobe screws. Um, moving across the dock port on the screen, we see the home button, very different home button that they had before. Before they had a physical um, button that would make contact, now it's a solid state button. There is not that click, but there is a taptic feedback. Uh, from the taptic engine when you press that button so it gives you that positive feedback and those are also held in by the trilobe screws so it doesn't look like that's coming off today. Uh, screen as well, side screws are all trilobe. Um, that would remove the thermal shield on the back here which helps dissipate the heat generated by the LEDs um, off to the side of the frame helping keep everything nice and cool. Um, I do see regular Phillips screws here, so we're going to disassemble. We're going to first remove the bracket for the ear speaker. camera up here a little bit and we have two screws in the ear speaker now that wasn't the case before if you ever choose to replace the screen in the future um, you will need generally to replace the home button as well as this flex cable along the top which has your proximity sensor and everything else located in it. That, um, 
Let's see if I can get that out carefully. I don't certainly don't want to tear the cable. And if this is going to fight me at all, I am not going to pull this out. I don't want to break this. Nope. They sometimes stick pretty good in there, so we're going to leave that in its home. But that's the cable that connects here. And that looks about as far as we're going to be able to take this apart without that trilobe. So Weha and a couple of the other manufacturers, I'm sure, have got their hands on one already and are tooling up right now uh, to have those, those tools available. But until that happens, it looks like uh, <laughs> we're at a stopping point. If, if you do a repair on this, the adhesive will be available, but when they seal these things, they do it in the laboratory conditions, you're not going to get the same level of water resistance. You may still be water resistant, but you're not going to get that same level of water resistance as you would directly out of the factory. Um, being careful, of course, when you, when you remove it, the factory installed adhesive is, it will fight you. And it's, it's a matter of taking it very, very slow so you don't damage anything. And in work, patience is probably the most important skill you can have when working with a device like this. Um, if you try to rush or try to force something, um, it, it will break. Um, these cables are very easy to tear. They're very thin. Um, if you tear a cable, you could damage, you could, you know, your camera you would have to replace, your display would possibly need replacing, or you can do additional damage. Um, when you're replacing these cables back onto the board, you need to make sure that they're lined up properly. If not lined up properly, you generally will not damage the cable. You will damage the connector on the logic board, and that's a board level solder repair. And there's very few people that do that. And the ones that do, um, it's a skill, and they charge accordingly. Um, also, when you're taking any piece of electronic apart, um, organization is absolutely critical. Um, I don't know if you can see my magnetic sheet here, but I have all the parts laid out as I've taken them out. So when I reassemble, I'll start from the end and work backwards. Um, every screw is in its place. I know exactly at a glance where that screw came from, and that screw goes in the right place. Um, some of these screws go into receivers that are soldered onto the logic board. So if you take a screw that's even a fraction of a millimeter too long and insert it in one of those holes, you will do irreparable damage to your phone. We certainly don't want to see that happen. So care and patience, absolutely critical. When you do any kind of re electronics repair, especially when you're doing a repair at this level, when you're dealing with um, double zero or triple zero screws or the smaller, which appear to be quite a bit smaller now, um, trilobe screws. Um, and that's about it. Just be very, very careful. Well, this is Holger with uh, Holger Tech and the Geek Group. Um, I'd like to thank um, Russell Sollier for their help in getting my hands on this phone as quickly as I did, um, as well as Group Vertical um, that supply the parts, a lot of the repair parts for these devices. So thank you to all those. And um, again, Holger with uh, the Geek Group. Thanks for watching.